for some small town folks. We're about to go and look in Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Dolce and Gabbana, Versace. Country bumpkins have never even stepped foot into a Louis Vuitton. But we're gonna go and we're gonna go have a look. So excited. Let's go now. People everywhere. We're not used to this. We come from the country. Not used to having people everywhere. Right. Going in there. Gucci. Hello my beautiful friends. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here, my name is Tara and as you've just seen, I went to Melbourne, I went to Sephora, uh, I did quite a few things that I had never done before. So I am here today to show you everything that I brought home with me from Melbourne and I did attempt to vlog a little bit here and there. I'd never vlogged before in my life. I only used my phone as well, but I did manage to get a few little snippets here and there of the things that we did while we were in Melbourne. I did go with just my husband, it was just him and myself. And yeah, I'm just gonna show you little bits and pieces and show you what I came home with from Sephora. And I also found a couple of other stores. So. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I went to Melbourne with my husband primarily to go to the UFC, which is the Ultimate Fighting Championship for anybody who doesn't know what that is. And I'll insert a few little clips right here. Hey guys, so I'm in Melbourne. And we're about to go in, my husband's already inside, but about to go into Eddie Had Stadium. It's now called Marvel Stadium. And we're going in to watch the UFC 243 weigh-ins. The actual fight is tomorrow, but we're here. And this is the main reason why I'm in Melbourne this weekend. But, later today I'm going to Sephora. I already know where it is, I've already scoped it out. But yeah, we're here. We're here for this now and um, I'll check in with you later. Bye! We're here, baby! <laughs> this is just the way in. This is not even the actual fight. So we went to Melbourne for that. Um, I bought the tickets for my husband for his birthday. We were able to go just on our own. Our kids went to their uncles for the weekend and we got a weekend away. So it was really, really nice. It had been years, actually, since the last time my husband and myself got to go anywhere without the children and anybody that's watching who has kids you know exactly what I mean doesn't mean you don't love your kids doesn't mean you don't love being a parent but sometimes it's nice to get away and it's not just good for us but it's good for the kids as well we all get a break from each other we all get a break from our regular surroundings and the monotony of life and we all got to have a great weekend. The kids had a fantastic time as well. So we come back, we're all refreshed and ready to wait the next couple of years until we get to go away for a weekend. Like that's reality. <laughs> as you've seen in the first clip that I played at the very start of the video, we are very much country bumpkins. We don't have any shopping here. We don't have anything here where I live in country Victoria. The shopping is dismal. Uh, we have the regular stores like Kmart, Big W, we've got the supermarkets, but we don't have any real shopping. So the fact that I got to go to a Louis Vuitton store and I didn't get to go into Gucci actually because the line, it just never ended. And I had so much that I had to squeeze into the couple of hours that I had for my shopping day. I just didn't have time or the patience to stand in line to go in and have a look, especially when I knew I wasn't going to buy anything. So I didn't actually get to go into Gucci. I did look through the windows, but yeah, I didn't get to go in. But all the other ones that you said on the video, I did, and it was a fantastic experience. There's actually a lineup at Gucci to get into the store. So we're gonna go in to have a look at Louis Vuitton instead. Here we go. They're probably gonna stop me 
probably not going to be allowed to film in here, so bye. I did feel very, very overwhelmed by all of that. Going into those stores knowing that there's no way I could afford to buy anything in those stores was a little bit... Uh, it was a little bit uncomfortable, but I really enjoyed looking and touching and just talking to the people who knew their stuff in there. Might go in and have a look in. Versace! I don't think we're going to be allowed to film in here either, but... I'm blown away. Really? I just don't feel like I even belong in these places. But, a girl can dream. I just found somewhere quiet to sit and have a bit of a break and a bit of a breather. Going into those luxury stores were very, very overwhelming. That is so much fun. But yes, makes you a bit jealous and a little bit, um, I guess a little bit uncomfortable too when you know that you can't afford to buy anything in there, but it's, it's nice to go in and have a look. But I'm gonna go into Dolce & Gabbana, which was one of my very first favorite luxury brands. I, remember I bought a pair of Sunnies once. And I thought I was the shit. <laughs> but I'm gonna go into Dolce & Gabbana and then I might head back down to uh, the Burke Street Mall. It was a really, really nice experience. And I did walk out of there thinking I'm gonna eventually one day make enough money to buy myself a real Louis Vuitton handbag. I've got a fake one. I've got a fake Louis Vuitton handbag. Um, I've had that for a long, long, long time and I think I got it from an op shop and I'm pretty sure it's fake. I don't think it's real. It could be real, I, I wouldn't know. It's from an op shop. I paid like two bucks for it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's get on with it. So firstly, I'm going to show you what I bought from Sephora because if anybody had seen my previous video, you would all know how excited I was to go to Sephora. This was the first time I'd ever stepped foot inside a Sephora store. I didn't realise that Maya and David Jones have all of our luxury brands and high-end brands as well. So I am currently in, where am I? Oh, I'm in David Jones. And the first thing that I find is the Chanel stand. So we're going to have a look around in here first and then I'm going to head to Sephora, that's my last stop. I've decided to leave it till last. But yeah, I'm going to have a look around here first. I'm here. I'm about to walk into Sephora. I'm so excited. I don't know if I'm going to be allowed to film in here though. Uh, I didn't know what to expect, but I did have a lot of plans for when I got to go into the store. A lot of which didn't come to fruition, but I'll explain that to you as, as I start pulling everything out of the bags. So, these are my two shopping bags. And while they're little, this was an expensive shopping trip. I've got my receipts right here. So I went to Mecca first, and for all of my friends that are watching from the US or from any other country, if you don't know what Mecca is, Mecca is a store like Sephora, I, I guess. They have a lot of brands that you guys over in the US that are you know, mostly familiar with, like Tarte and Too Faced, and is it Huda Beauty? Is that how you say it? All of those brands, and I've just had a memory blank. But most of the brands that we all see on YouTube that we watch our videos and make our videos about and all of that jazz, this store Mecca has a lot of those brands. I didn't know that there was a Mecca where I was going, but there was, and it was inside of Maya, which is a like a big department store. And I ended up spending $179 at Mecca and $173 at Sephora. So it was an expensive shopping trip for me. It's the most money I've ever spent in my life on makeup. But I had so much fun doing it and it was a one-off. Like I'm not going to go and spend that kind of money on a weekly basis. I saved all my money. I work. 
you know, I put my money away for this trip so that I could buy what I wanted without having to worry. But please don't think that that kind of money and this kind of shopping is a normal thing because it's not. And it's not a normal thing for most people. That's one thing that I seem to think about a lot when I'm watching other YouTube channels. Like how does somebody who reviews all the latest products all the time and they've always got something new. I wonder how they afford it. And although it's none of our business, it's none of anybody's business how somebody affords anything that they buy or what they spend their money on. It is nobody's business. But I do want you to know that like, I'm just like everybody else. I work, my husband works, we have four kids, we have a lot of bills that need to be paid every single week so this is something that is not normal for me and this was most definitely a treat most definitely and I've actually since I've bought all of this I do have another few things coming in the mail but after that I am just going to slow down a little bit and enjoy what I've already bought because I've found that I've got more coming and more coming and more coming and I'll get to use a palette once and then it goes on the shelf and I don't get to use it again and until I make a specific video to plan to use it again. Most of the palettes I've bought have only been used, I don't know, two or three times max. And I really want to enjoy what I've already bought. So after the few that I've got coming in the mail do arrive and I get to use those, I'm going to start using the rest of it. And you've already seen all the videos that I do do already. I've got a few series happening at the moment where I can pull out palettes that I already own and use those. So that's pretty much the plan. I'm not on a no buy. I've always been on a permanent low buy. That's something that I just didn't even put a name to. That's just me. Like I, I have responsibilities. I have a family. I have bills. I can't afford to just buy makeup constantly and buy everything that's released and I'm not a review channel anyway because I don't know enough about makeup to to be able to to review something and give people an honest opinion and feedback and knowledge on the makeup so I'm not a review channel I just play with makeup so yeah that's the plan after I've showed you all this we're going to maybe do something with my eyes hint hint maybe there's something in here that i can use on my eyes i am going to start with sephora i am not going to use everything on my face today because i've already got base makeup on and plus it would just take far too long so i'm just going to show you everything in future videos i'll definitely be using everything but just not today i'm just going to show you most of it i'm just going to pull it out like a lucky dip First thing I got is the Tarte Skincare Eye Must Haves. So just before I do show you everything else, I bought a lot of minis because there's a lot of things that I bought that are brands that I've never used before, never tried before. You'll see what I got for the money that I spent and you'll understand why I chose to buy all of these products in minis because to buy the full size products in everything that I bought would have cost me a fortune, an absolute fortune. And I really bought these products, like I chose each item very carefully because they're the products that I wanted to try from every brand. That was available to me because that's another topic that I'll get into as well. So yeah, I got the Tarte Skin Care Eye Must Haves. So it comes with a Rainforest of the Sea Deep Dive Cleansing Gel, a Tarte Maracuja Sea Brightening Eye Treatment and a Lights Camera Lashes mascara so it's just a little pouch that's got three mini products in it i thought this was only 20 bucks like that was really good value i thought considering how much everything is in australia you guys in the us have no idea no idea how how expensive everything is for us over here next i got an anastasia beverly hills dip brow gel in a mini just because I've never ever tried anything from ABH, but I really wanted to try the dip brow gel. So that's what I got. Next, I got, uh, oh, this is just a Sephora like waterproof gel eyeliner because I had run out 
So that's just a Sephora one. Next I got Natasha Denona Diamond and Glow Blush and Highlighting Powder. So I had planned out my trip to Sephora. I was going to swatch a heap of eyeshadow palettes. I had a shopping list all set, what I wanted to buy. There was palettes I wanted to get, but I really wanted to swatch them first. I wanted to test out formulas of products so that in the future, if I want to buy something, I have an idea of what I'm getting into. And unfortunately, there was nothing new at this Sephora. This is a Sephora in, this was in Burke Street Mall, which is in the CBD of Melbourne. So it's a pretty big store, like it's a major store. Maybe not big as in size-wise big, but you would expect that if any of the stores here are going to have the latest products, it's going to be one in the city for sure. They didn't have anything new. They didn't. And I really wanted to try the Natasha Denona uh, Metropolis palette. I wanted to swatch it because I've been wanting to buy it. I wanted to buy the gold, the little mini gold. They didn't have any of it. The only thing I could find was this mini diamond and glow, which is a blush and highlighter mini palette. So it's just got little blush and a little highlighter. I paid 30 bucks for this. It's tiny but at least it's got a little mirror, it's quite cute. But this is all they had, and I'm sure this is not a new product. I'm positive of it. But at least now I have something I can test out, at least something of hers. The packaging is really nice, so I was excited about this at least, even if it's not a new product. Next, I got a Fenty Beauty little gift pack. So this is the Bomb Baby Mini Lip and Face Set. It's got a little mini gloss bomb and I've never tried anything from Fenty either. The majority of the products that I've bought, I've never tried those brands at all. I was so excited to find this. So it's got a little mini gloss bomb and the mini highlighter. Oh look at how little and cute it is. It's so cute. So this is Hustler Baby. So it's her Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter. And the packaging is really pretty. Oh my gosh, look at it. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so tiny. I love how they've all got mirrors. That's so sweet. That's cool. Alright, we're going to try that later. And we got the Gloss Bomb. Oh, I'm so excited for this. I've heard nothing but amazing things about her lip glosses. So I'm going to pop this on right now. Oh, it smells nice. That's nice. It feels great. Okay, what's next? I've got a Fenty Beauty fly liner. I've been so excited to get this. This has been on my wish list for ages. I actually got this in a full size. Oh, it's got a little shaker ball in it. How cool is that? Oh, how beautiful. That is so bloody smooth. I'm so excited to try that. Very, very black, very opaque and no bleeding. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to try that. And the last thing I got from Sephora... Ah, you hear the angels singing? Oh my god, I got the other one! Now I have both of the Pat McGrath Eye Ecstasy little mini palettes. I'm not going to open this one because these little sequiny things, they go everywhere. I'm not opening this now, we'll have a play with it in another video, but this one is the Sublime palette. So I don't know if you can see the picture on the back there, that's the shades in this one. So this is the more neutral one, whereas this one was the more colourful one. But I've got both of them now. I can't wait to have a play with this because I absolutely adore this little thing. I actually pull it out and use it all the time. So yeah, that's that. I'm excited. I'm excited. So that was one thing that... Sephora did have. They did have Pat McGrath's latest collection, so the Mothership 6 and her other Mothership palettes. And they had this and the little mini lip kits that come in these little packets as well. So they, they did have all of that. But yeah, that's it from Sephora. And now this is the one that I am most excited about, surprisingly. Even though I was so excited to go to Sephora, I actually found one thing that I really, really wanted from Mecca. Okie dokie, the first thing in this little bundle, I got the Urban Decay All Nighter Long Lasting Makeup Setting Spray. And this one's a mini as well. I have wanted to try this, so that's... Uh, another exciting one. I'm excited about all of it. Every single thing that I got I'm excited to try so I'm gonna just stop saying how excited I am because you already know. Right next I got the Hourglass Ambient Lighting 
powder. The reason why I got the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the Mini is because I've seen lots and lots of reviews for the Hourglass Ghost Palette, which is their new one, and I know they're all limited edition, and by the time that I can actually afford to buy one, they'll probably be long gone. But what I liked the look of in the Ghost Palette, in all the reviews that I watched, was this shade. This is the Ambient Lighting Powder, so this one's in Diffused Light. I'm pretty sure that I got it right. You can hear anything in the background. It is my kids. I've got two home at the moment. One's sick and one's too young to go to school, so he's off. He's not at daycare today, so he's home, and then I've got one sick, so he's in the background coughing, and then I've got my little one stomping around because he stomps around like an elephant. That's what you can hear in the background. So, I'm pretty sure that I got this right. Please, if somebody knows, if I have got this wrong, please let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that this is a shade that's in the Ghost palette. Like, for minis, like, the packaging is so nice, and so I'm assuming that like even though it's a mini, it's still the same sort of packaging, just shrunk down. I am so excited to try this because it looks gorgeous in videos that I've seen. So I just want to tell you how much I paid for this one specifically. So I got this one from Mecca. So for this tiny little mini powder, I paid $37. And it contains 0 0.04 ounces or 1.3 grams. I am so excited for this. It's so pretty. These are all gorgeous. The packaging is beautiful for these. Next is the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. This is a holy grail for so many people. And it's been one product that has been a constant on YouTube since I started watching beauty videos long even long before I started my own channel this powder has been an OG on the platform so it must be good because it's still around people still use it so I got a mini of course again and I got the shade translucent like I said and this is actually 0 0.33 ounces or 9.3 grams so it's not too bad really but I paid $35 for it and it is a tiny little one but you do get quite a bit of product in it so that's probably still gonna last me a good while I cannot wait to try this powder and if I do like them then I'm gonna buy the full sizes eventually and last but not least before I show you what I got I had a list of palettes that I wanted to buy. Of all the palettes that both stores had, they had none of the palettes that I wanted to, one, swatch, two, look at, and three, buy. They had none except for one. There was one palette that I had on my list that I was definitely going to buy. All the others, they didn't have them, like all the new releases. They didn't have the new ABH Norvina volume palettes, the big palettes. They didn't have the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette or the little mini gold palette. I wanted to get the little mini ones from Natasha Denona so bad. Well, they, they were at the top of my list. They didn't have them. But they had this and this has been on my list since it was released. And yes, I know that this is no longer new and nobody cares and there's newer stuff out now that everybody's interested in and looking at and playing with but I got the Naked Honey palette ah! this palette got dragged so bloody hard when it first was released I didn't say anything I didn't comment on anyone's videos I didn't comment on anyone's Twitter I didn't comment on anyone's Instagram because when I seen it I was like oh I don't mind that I kind of like it but it was just boring, this is boring, this is shit, this is not honey, this is da da da, this is crap, this is blah blah blah. So I thought, no, nope, I'm just going to shut my mouth. And then when the reviews started coming in, people were loving it. And I was like, yes, I'm going to buy it, I cannot wait. And I was going to buy it online, but I didn't, again, because I was terrified of not having tried the formula. And I mean, every palette I've ever bought, I've never tried the formula, but... I only ever have bought online the things that I couldn't wait and I had to have, like now. I had to have it yesterday. So this was one that I thought, no, I can wait. I'm going to Melbourne. I knew that I was going to Melbourne. And I thought, I'm just going to see if they've got it. And they had it. I am so bloody happy they had at least one of the palettes that I had been looking at. And here she is. It is so stunning. I know that it doesn't look like much, but 
it is just gorgeous. It's even more pretty in person than it was on all, on all the reviews that I'd seen. And people were loving it. So I'm bloody excited. And this is my first ever Urban Decay eyeshadow palette. I just cannot wait to dive in. And we're going to do that right now. So I've heard as well that the actual brushes that come in the Urban Decay palettes aren't bad. Is that right? I mean, I could be wrong, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I probably won't use it, but it's a really cool brush. Like, I don't like double-ended brushes, but the handle is cool. <laughs> but, it, it, yeah, it feels alright, but I've got nicer feeling brushes than that, so I probably won't use it today. But I do appreciate getting a brush. It's very nice. So I'm going to zoom you in. Let's put some of this on our eyeballs, shall we? I'm pretty sure that you're all waiting for it, but yes, I am going to work after this. So I am going to do something that I can wear to work, which I'm pretty sure is anything with this palette because it is a neutral palette. Some of the golds are a little bit beyond neutral, but I'm pretty confident I can do anything with this palette and still be fine to wear it to work. So I'm so excited. So I'm gonna dive into this shade first, which is Sting, which is the very last shade. It is the darkest shade in the palette. I am going to apply this. I don't know how I feel about this mirror. Holy shit, that's pigmented. Woo, I was not expecting that. Oh, I should have been. Like I've watched the reviews. Holy cow. Hopefully it blends out. I don't think I like this mirror. It's awkward. Go back to me old faithful. So I am actually going to spread this out a fair bit because this is kind of like on an everyday basis this would be how I would do my eyeshadow. So I will use a dark colour in my outer corner but I'll actually use this this colour like I'll concentrate it in my outer corner but then I will blend it out and it sort of becomes a transition shade as well like I don't know if that's the correct terminology or if, if I'm just talking out my ass but I don't tend to put another colour up there not all the time sometimes I will and then sometimes I'll go in with a darker shadow after I've put like a lighter shadow up in my crease area but a lot of the time I'll use one shadow just I'll pick the darker shade I want to use and then I'll blend it out and it becomes my crease shade. That's quite pretty. I'm going to grab a smaller detail brush and I'm going to go into this one here, Drip, and I'm going to pop that on my lower lash line. Hopefully I don't regret this because that first shade I used is quite cool but I'm just popping it down there like just lining my lower lash line with it. Has anyone else got this palette? Let me know what you think because when it was first revealed it honestly got dragged to filth. I'm just dipping back into that first shade sting because I want to bring it in a little more. I'm just going to bring it down a little too just to blend it in with that other shade. They blend beautifully. But yeah as I was saying I just seem to get off track a lot. Uh, let me know if you've got this palette and what you think because I'm sure it's not just YouTubers and beauty reviewers that like it surely not surely there's actually like real makeup consumers that have bought it as well that like it so if you do have it please 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 tell me what you think alrighty so I don't think I need any more matte shadows I think that's just fine and I'm gonna go straight into shimmers and I am going to use this one here which is called amber this one here it's so beautiful it's like an orangey yellow shade and I'm going to pop it on the outer part of my lid and I'm not going to wet it. And if you're new here, I, I tend to not always wet my shimmers. I don't always like to wet them. I find I have a little bit more control over like where, where I can blend them out and, and whatnot when they're still dry. And this one here, I'm only adding it to my outer corner anyway. So, so yeah, I don't always wet my shimmers. Sometimes I will. It depends on what I'm doing with them. So at the moment, I'm going in on my outer corner and on my outer lid and so I don't feel the need to wet it and plus I like to see how they perform without being wet as well and without wetting it it does have a lot of fallout actually there's fallout from other shades there too so from some of the mattes which is a bit concerning because I've already done my base so I've grabbed, I've grabbed a clean fluffy brush and I'm just going to blend out where I always drag up my shimmer too high what I do I don't mean to, but I do. It's because I've only got very small lids. I don't have a lot of lid space. While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to get rid of that fallout. Okay, so the fallout did brush away easily. Like, it didn't even leave any anything on my face, so not a big deal. 
so I am now going to do something on my inner the inner part of my lid and I have to use the shade honey because that is the shade that's named after the palette so I think that's the star of the show it's right in the middle and it's a bright yellow gold shimmer so I'm going to pop that on my inner part of my lid Oh wow, that's beautiful. So does anybody else that watches me watch the UFC or do their partners or their husbands or brothers or uncles, anybody watch it? It's a big part of my family, like with my husband and, and my boys. My husband is a fanatic and I actually quite enjoy it myself. So I, I sit down and watch it with him. We get all the pay-per-views and we watch the pay-per-views at home. Sometimes they're on it stupid hours of the morning because of American prime time TV <laughs> and the time zone difference. We still sit up and watch them. Alright, I'm going to grab that fluffy brush again. And just while I blend out this shimmer here, I'll pop a little bit of footage from our trip to the UFC right here. is for anyone who had never heard of it or didn't know what it was it's just basically people that get in a octagon shaped cage and ultimately they compete for their weight class and the belt so the championship belt there's men and women both sexes compete and it's not just senseless fighting like it's actually a discipline um, mixed martial arts so you know all sorts of disciplines of martial arts it's all combined some fighters do multiple martial arts so mixed martial arts they have multiple disciplines and yeah it is there's a lot of technique and a lot of discipline involved but it can be brutal and people do get hurt it is just so exhilarating and the adrenaline gets flowing and it's it's just, it's a sport it's like boxing boxing isn't any different except that the rules are a little different and the shape of the ring is different but it's essentially the same it's like it's fighting that's yeah for anybody that didn't know that that's a thing that my family were all into my oldest boy he's 15 and he does mixed martial arts and he does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and he recently competed and came home with two bronze medals so it is a big part of our family and while I understand that a lot of people aren't into it and a lot of people actually don't even agree with the sport that is totally fine each to their own everybody has their own opinion everybody's entitled to their own opinion 
and I'm happy to hear everybody's opinion as long as everybody respects everybody else's opinion and people can agree to disagree. That's basically where I stand on that. If you love it, great. If you don't, great. I'm sure that you're into something else that's amazing or not or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, who cares what the next person's into? Like, you just do you. That is what everybody should live by. You know, you do you and eat an apple a day because it keeps the doctor away. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's just be happy and live our lives the way we want to live our lives. And if it means going to the UFC, and using it as an excuse to go to Sephora, well then gosh darn it, I'm gonna do it. I need to finish this look because I've got to get ready for work. I need to shut up, stop rambling and finish. So I blended out the gold shimmer that I put up here, the honey shade, because I didn't want a harsh line. I didn't want it looking as if I had a cut crease because I could have done that. These shimmers are so pigmented that I could have had a faux cut crease but I didn't want that and I generally don't. I like to blend out my shadows if I can. I am going to go back into that darkest shade again which is Sting and I'm going to pop that back in there so it's sort of like a mixture of that and that first shimmer that I put down and I'm just going to run that back across there a little because I kind of lost it a little bit when I was blending out that shimmer. I just want to re-intensify that darker outer corner and then I'm not going to get any more product but I'm going to use what's left on the brush just to run it back down under my lower lash line. I do have quite a bit of fallout from that gold and it's all over my face. I've never really cared about that. Where shimmer falls down there, I don't care, I just rub it in. It looks nice. <laughs> it looks like I've got gold highlighter all over my nose. But that's fine, I don't care about that. So I think that I'm really happy with it and it kind of looks very similar to the look that I did the other day on my Crystals Inspires My Makeup series, the episode 2 with the citrine stone. It almost looks identical to that except I think this is a little bit yellower. A little bit more honey like maybe? So the only thing that I have to do now is pop something on my inner corner. So. This shade down here, which is called Flyby, I thought it was a matte, but it's actually a little bit more satiny. So maybe, maybe it might work as an inner corner highlight. We'll see. Actually, maybe it works well because it's a nice pigmented off-white that actually looks like it's glowing. It looks like a, like a proper highlight shade. Like it doesn't really have any sparkle or any coloured pigment. It just, it looks like a highlight. Like... It works really well actually. I'm not mad at that at all. Alright, that's it for shadows I think. I'm going to go off now and I'm going to finish off my eyes, just do some mascara and all of that jazz and I will be back in a jiffy. Okay, I'm back! And while this is the finished look, I'm not quite happy with it just yet. So I am going to add one little touch just so that I feel like it's complete and I'm happy with it. I'm going to dip back into this shade here, Sting, just on a little detail brush and I'm going to run it on my lower lash line. Just, I just don't feel like I have enough depth down there and I didn't want to go in with my black eyeliner. I well could have used a brown eyeliner but I figured while I'm wearing this shade already, why not just use this shade? does the same thing and I'm not pulling in more and more products that I wasn't intending on using. So I just wanted to give it a little bit of depth down there and make sure everything's nice and blended. And I think that's a lot better. On my eyes when I ducked off camera, all I used was just my... <laughs> This is a CoverGirl pencil that I've had for so long that I, the last time I had to sharpen it, I sharpened it with a knife. <laughs> but I absolutely love this pencil and it's one of my most favourites. And it's getting small, I'm going to have to get a new one eventually. Then I used my Fenty Fly Liner and oh my god, I was able to create the best wings with this pen. I am just in love with this pen honestly I've never used anything like it it's the first non-drugstore eyeliner that I've ever used and it was so easy so precise and I was able to create wings without them getting huge like they usually do so I'm in love with this this is amazing 
I'm so, so glad I chose to get it because I almost put it back. I'm glad I didn't. Now, I tried the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes, this little mini, and I don't like it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it specifically, but I just don't feel like enough product gets on the wand. The wand is a great size, but whether it's the product is too thin or what it is, it just doesn't build up enough for me. Uh, it worked great on my lower lashes, so I will use it on my lower lashes, but for my top lashes, I like my mascara to be nice and like volumizing and nice and full because I don't wear fake lashes. So I just ended up going back in with my Essence False Lashes mascara, which is, has become my favorite. Even though I hated it the first time I used it, I've actually come to really enjoy this one. So that's what I've got on my eyes. Now, the last thing I need to do is I need to pop on some highlighter and I'm going to try this one, which is the Hustler Baby. It's so pretty, oh my god, it's so shiny and glittery. I still, I don't own anything like this either. So I'm so excited to try this. And because it's got that golden sheen to it, I think that it's going to look great with this look. So I've just got an e.l.f. brush, this is a concealer brush that I use for highlighter. And I'm going to pop it on my cheeks. Oh, that is so pretty. Oh my god. Actually, I tell a lie. I got a highlighter from Luna Beauty just the other day. What an idiot. I'm so sorry, Manny. I forgot that I got your highlighter. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love that highlighter. This is pretty, though. This is a lot more buildable than the Luna Beauty one, though. Luna Beauty goes on and it's just like, bam, it's in your face and you're glowing to the gods. But this one, I find it, it's a little bit more buildable. Probably not as smooth, actually as Manny's highlighter. Manny's highlighter just glides on and it hides everything. Like you can't see a single pore. But this one here, it's a little bit less in your face, which is probably more wearable for a lot of people, I guess, because not everybody likes to be glowing. Okay. I quite like it. It's very pretty. It's got a beautiful gold tone to it and it suits this look really well. So I, I definitely will wear it. And as for this little guy, I'm in love and I'm probably going to grab this every day because this is like, this is my jam. This is what I would wear on a day to day basis and I absolutely love it. I am so happy I picked this up because while I love my colourful eyeshadow palettes and I will use them and I love them to death, everything I've ever bought I love and I buy things because I know I'm gonna love them. But there's so many of them that I probably wouldn't use on a day-to-day -day basis. I do grab for color most days. I'll pop a bit of color somewhere most days, but this is gonna be something that I'll grab for because I feel like it's gonna be really easy to work with as well. This was super, super simple. It took no effort at all, and it looks beautiful. I am just so happy so happy that I got this palette. So yeah, that's it guys. Thank you for coming on this journey with me because you were there before I left. We were talking just before I took off in the car to go to Melbourne and then you were here when I got back. So thank you for sticking around and thank you for wanting to, to see how I went and getting excited with me because that made me feel even more excited that I wasn't being silly. <laughs> I'm an adult, I'm a mum. You know, but we're allowed to get excited over makeup if we want, or anything else for that matter that excites us. I had a ball, I had an absolute ball. I am going to end off this video with a little bit of a clip from the UFC of the main event, which was why everybody was there. My husband was going for Robert Whittaker, which is the Australian guy, the, the white guy in the fight. I'm just going to leave a little snip of the last couple of seconds of that fight. I hope you enjoy it. If you're not into that sort of thing then definitely click out of the video now but I am going to add that in just for a little <laughs> because that's what we were that's what we were there for that was the whole reason we went. It was the whole like the pinnacle of the whole weekend was this couple of seconds worth of video that I'm going to pop at the end of the video so I thought I'd chuck that in just for shits and giggles. Thank you so much for being here. I always forget to ask you to like and subscribe if you're not already and if you are, thank you. But yeah, if you're not, I would love, love, love it if you would actually consider subscribing to my channel. If not now, come back and watch a few more of my videos and maybe have a think about subscribing soon. I would love that. And finally, guys, make sure you go to something kind for someone because it doesn't cost you anything. It can be of minimal 
effort and energy to do something kind for someone, it will make you feel good. If you make someone else feel good, I give you my 100% guarantee on that. Just try it. One random act of kindness even. You'll see just how good you'll feel. You'll feel amazing, I promise. Until next time, bye. Don't look away, Nate. Oh, oh.